Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Let us take a moment to reflect on this most excellent and holy week, to commit ourselves into God's hands and to thank Him for His love, grace and mercy in our lives. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. And we sing our first hymn, All My Hope on God is Found. As we continue with our service, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments and all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. 
unless I wash you, you shall have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Say after me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Be absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for Monday, Thursday. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our gradual hymn is Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears revealed 
bright to shine in us, thou our soul. We in the last days to sing God's praise than when. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simeon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and guarded himself with a towel. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was guarded. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you do not know now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than him who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified. And in him, God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always pleasing in your sight, O God our strength, Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
Our text for today is taken from our gospel reading, John chapter 13, verse 14. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Our readings for tonight are taken from Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26, and John chapter 13, verse 1 to 17, and verses 31b to 35. Today is a very wonderful day in the life of the church. Monday Thursday has many names, Holy Thursday. It marks the beginning of the three great days before Easter. Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Day. Today is a day where we learn more about the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, His purpose for coming into His creation, and the love that He has shown to us, and the elevation that He has given us, not just to be servants, but to become his children, only if we love one another. This is not just an ordinary day. It is a day that is themed. If we look at our Old Testament reading, again, when you have time, look at it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. Verse 14a. So this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. The institution of the Passover, as we can glean from our Old Testament reading, was ordained by God as a memorial to the Israelites, a remembrance of the mighty acts of God in bringing about their physical deliverance from bondage out of the land of Egypt. A lamb without blemish, was killed, roasted, and, and blood was put on the two doorposts on the lintel of the houses where all those who believe in Christ, in God, resided, and where this Passover meal was being partaken of. This was the Passover of the Lord. When the angel of death passed over the land of Egypt and struck down all those who were not under God's protection. In our Gospel reading, hundreds of years down the line, one can still see even today that the children of Israel are still celebrating the Passover of our Lord and of their physical deliverance out of the land of Egypt. And here we see Christ who came not just to physically deliver us, but to spiritually deliver us from ourselves, the world and the devil and all that is around us, to give us a new beginning, a new life in him. In Christ, we conquer all. In Christ, we have faith that whatever comes our way, we will overcome and have overcome. In the blood of the Lamb, that is about to be shared, that we bring to remembrance in our Good Friday service tomorrow. Here we see Christ, the one and only true Lamb of God, refining and bringing this celebration of the Passover to a new height. Here we see Christ in God, who shows us what it is to love and to serve, knowing that his time had come for him to go to the Father, and yet he still loved us to the end. And even though for our sake he was going to die on the cross, he did not hate us because his whole purpose was his love for us. Christ came to die for you, for me, and the rest of the world. For no love, no greater love is there than for a man to die for his fellow brother. Christ came to die on the cross. 
because he loved us. And in this day and time, where around us the presence of death pervades over the world, where coronavirus is inflicting fear in many hearts, an enemy that is not sin, a virus that is not sin, and yet who strikes fear into the heart of any right thinking person. We need faith. Faith that those who came before us had in believing that God was going to redeem them from physical bondage. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not just come to redeem us from physical bondage, but also from spiritual bondage and of enemies and foes, visible and invisible. Christ is a true healer. And for those who are sick, at home or in hospitals in our own nation and throughout the world, we are praying for Christ to lay his hands upon them, to use each and every one of us and all those who are looking after them in their homes or in hospitals, to use them to be his hands and his eyes and his feet to bring healing and peace into our land. Christ the healer, Monday, Thursday, prepares us for the healing grace and power that is going to flow and that continually flows from the cross of Christ on Calvary. We have faith because we know that we are going to celebrate. There is no joy, no happiness at times without pain. We are all looking forward to Easter Day to celebrate. But we must go through Good Friday before the pain, the anguish and the sorrow and the torment before we can get on to Easter Day. This are difficult times. Let us know that Christ came to give us life in his fullness. Let us hold on in faith and not to be afraid. As they say, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a brave man only one. In Christ we have our faith. As our first hymn said, all our hope on God is founded. Put yourself, put all your hopes on Christ for deliverance. Strengthen your faith by studying Holy Scripture. Learn to love your neighbor, to love God and to love yourself. Learn to keep safe in these times. Monday, Thursday. A day where we learn what it is to serve. And in our world today, we are seeing people serving each other. And we pray that this will continue where we learn to serve each other. Either through calling our neighbors to make sure that they are fine. And for those who are called to be caring for others. Let us thank God for their ministry. For those who are called to heal the sick, let us thank God for their ministry and to pray for their safety as they carry out this work on our behalf and each other. Christ showed us what true hum humility was and is and should be. He stooped to wash the feet of the disciples. Unless, verse, you know, on, in verse 8b, Unless I wash you, you can have no share with me. In baptism, we die to sin and rise to live with Christ because we've become part of him. On Easter day, we will all renew our baptismal vow. For those who are about to be baptized on Easter day, their baptism will still occur when this virus is out. And in the waters of baptism, we are renewed. We are given new life, new strength, spiritually and physically, to face all our todays and all our tomorrows. Baptism ties us to Christ. Let us learn and remember in our text what it is to serve one another, to love one another, to be there for each other, and above all, 
in all that we do, to be conscious of the saving grace of Christ in our life. And as we are about to receive the Lord's Supper, let us remember what we are about to do. To do this, as Corinthians says, in remembrance of me. We will do that in a moment. To bring about the healing power of the cross. To bring about the life, the passion, and above all, the victory that we have in Christ. Let us learn to love God. The first, and I keep on saying this, the three imperatives of the Ten Commandments is to love God, neighbor, and self. Unless we can love and love Jesus Christ, unless we can love Christ, it will be very difficult for us to save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. It's the same whole word. Physician, heal thyself. We need Christ to heal us, to heal our nation, to heal the world that is in the throes of fear and death. For only in Christ do we have life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have life eternal. And for those who have gone before us, they have gone to a place of joy and grace. Let us on this Monday Thursday learn to love, to serve one another, to serve our neighbors, our nation, and the world around. And above all, to proclaim Christ. As we prepare for Good Friday and Easter, there is no way we can get to the joy of Easter Day, of the resurrection from the dead, unless we go through Good Friday. And as we will partake of communion through our celebration in faith, may it nourish you for the journey ahead. May he strengthen you for the journey ahead. And in it, may you draw strength, increase of faith. As Christ herself nourishes you in body, mind and soul. Amen. moment of silence, let us pray and commit ourselves into God's hands. The response, Lord in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Father, through Christ, the Savior of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We, your children, and especially here at Emmanuel Parish Church, commit ourselves to follow his example of love and sacrifice and service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, where the name of your son, Jesus Christ, is called. We pray for ourselves at Emmanuel Parish Church, for unity, the grace to learn to love each other more and more, and above all, to love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. We pray for our mission here at Emmanuel Parish Church, Leighton. We pray for all those that we have sent out over the years and decades to be missionaries in your world. We pray for our members who are scattered throughout the world in your name, sharing the good news of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
on this night. He commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. We pray for those who have never experienced the love of Christ in their lives. We pray for those who have never experienced love in any form in their lives. We pray that you will knock on the door of your hearts and allow them to feel your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for our fellow brothers and sisters throughout the world who have been persecuted or killed for believing in your Son, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for all your missionaries and evangelists, for all your priests, deacons, and episcopates throughout the world, and for those who proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. on this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace and faith of Christ. We remember those from our own parish who have passed away into glory. We remember those that we know at this moment in time who are either suffering in pain or in hospital. Those whom we know through others who have died and we commit all the victims of this coronavirus and those who have died violently and before their time into your hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, can we offer our own thoughts and prayers to God? May Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who heard the prayers of Anna at Shiloh, hear your prayers for good. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, for the feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And I offer you all a sign of peace. And as we prepare for communion, we will prepare our own hearts and minds, and um, we sing a next song as we prepare to share Mass together. Jesus, stand among us, have a meeting of our lives. Be our sweet agreement at the meeting of our eyes. Oh Jesus, we love you. So we gather here. Join our hearts in unity and take away. and every land Christ the love between us at the joining of our hands Oh Jesus we love you so we gather here 
Join our hearts in unity and take away our fear. Jesus, stand among us at the breaking of the bread. Join us as one body as we worship you. We are using Eucharistic Prayer B for those of you who know it by heart or if you have the books on page 22 of our Holy Communion book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he gathered himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us, knowing that his heart had come. In his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, heart unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We to join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord God Almighty, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. The source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance.
remember that song. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit unto your people. We gather into one in your kingdom. And all we share this one bread and one cup. So that we, in the company of all the apostles, patriarchs, matriarchs, and the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord in whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our service continues on page 12. As our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink with me in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, yes. merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls watch through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. And as I eat and drink of the body of Christ, do so with me in faith. The body of Christ, broken for me and for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Shepherd. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption for you are alive and reign now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Today being Monday, Thursday, if we had been in our church, we would have washed our feet and we will also be stripping the sanctuary and the altar to prepare ourselves for the desolation that our Lord faced on the cross that we will be bringing to remembrance on Good Friday. And what we will be doing tonight is I will say a bit of a prayer and I will clear this table that we have used to celebrate the Eucharist and then as an act of um, stripping of the sanctuary cover this cross with a cloth in preparation for the desolation of Good Friday. The King is among us, His Spirit is here, let's draw near and worship, let songs fill the air, He looks down upon Oh. 
a reading from Psalm 88. O Lord my God, I call for help by day. I cry out in the night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thy ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to show. I am reckoned among those who go down to the pit. I am a man who has no strength, like one forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom thou dost remember no more, for they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Thy wrath lies heavy upon me, and thou dost overwhelm me with all thy waves. Thou hast caused my companions to shun me. Thou hast made me a thing of horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call upon thee, O Lord. I spread out my hands to thee. Dost thou walk wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to praise thee? Is thy steadfast love declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in Abaddon? Are thy wonders known in the darkness, or thy saving help in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O Lord, cry to thee. In the morning my prayer comes before thee. O Lord, why dost thou cast me off? Why dost thou hide thy face from me? Afflicted and close to death from my youth up, I suffer thy terrors, I am helpless. Thy wrath has swept over me. Thy dread assaults destroy me. They surrounded me like a flood all day long. They closing upon me together. Thou art cost lover and friend to shun me. My companions are in darkness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The response to this prayer is, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. The rose to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All our gates are desolate, our priests groan. Our young girls grieve, and our lot is bitter. Our children have gone away, captives before the foe. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. For on high he sent fire. It went deep into my bones. He spread a net for my feet. It turned me back. He has left me stunned, faint all day long. For these things I weep. My eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me. Want to revive my courage. My children are desolate, for the enemy has prevailed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. All who pass along the way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their heads at daughter Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? 
the thought of my affliction and homelessness is one word and God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. And as we continue to prepare ourselves, as we bring to remembrance Good Friday, let us hold on steadfast in faith and to keep this watch with our Lord Jesus Christ. 